This is one of those trips where everything had to line up perfectly. And although we had high hopes for this day, we could have no idea quite how epic it was gonna end up being. All right, Justin, what do you got there? The Hawaiian power bar. What here in Hawaii call us an everyday meal. Spam, rice, nori, heaven. What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode here. Today we have something incredibly special for you guys. We are way offshore. The valley's here in Hawaii. We've come all the way around the corner. Really, really rare to get this kind of weather out here. So we're super excited for it. We've got an incredible day planned. We're starting off with some trolling. We're gonna do some spearfishing, blue water. We're gonna do some reef spearfishing. We might do some crabbing, some menapachi fishing. Menpachi. I don't know what the heck a menapachi is. Menpachi. <laughs> menpachi. Menpachi. There you go, menpachi. Menapachi. <laughs> We're out here with Asa. I've only been out on this boat a couple times, but every single time, it's like one of the best days we ever have. Really, really excited. So we're suited up, ready to get in. We have a pretty cool little secret spot here of Justin's. Don't show the shoreline. We're gonna try really hard not to show you the shoreline. If it is blurred <laughs> later, that is why. Check that out. What the heck are these? These are called Nabeta. Nabeta. Also known as Mobetas, because they're more better fried than anything else. So the Nobetas are really, really cool because it's one of the few fish that you actually fry with the scales on. You don't scale them first. And then the scales like crunch up and make like their own breading. Check this out. We've been just getting ready. Ace has been killing it. So the very first thing I'll do when I get to a spot like this, and I know there's fish everywhere, is I'll just kind of do a dive. And that first little drop gives you that really good kind of recon mission. You can look around, you can see up and see what's kind of going on around you. Now, I was I had a lot of fish around. I was looking to see kind of which one I wanted, which one was gonna approach, which one's gonna give me a really good shot. And then I turned around right here to see what was going on and Justin was lining up on one. And I paused, I really wanted to catch this fish on film. I don't really know what happened here, but somehow Justin shot just a little bit low and missed him. So this left me kind of all alone in the water. I was the only one there loaded and I could really approach this however I wanted. And this is so, so important when you've got all these fish around to kind of take your time and not screw it up. You know, you wanna make sure you get a, one of the bigger fish, you wanna make sure you get a good shot. And that's kind of what I did here was really kind of slow down. You see this one right here was coming in. I kind of decided this is my one. I did those couple kicks towards him and I put the shot exactly where I want it, right above that anal fin. Now, that shot has been proven to land a lot more fish. And after losing that one a couple weeks ago, I, I swore I would not screw it up again. I would not aim for the head no matter how close I was to these fish. So I was only rigged with a single flopper and a reel, but I also had a belt reel on my belt. And the kind of technique here is to swim after your fish, especially with these reels. Like you'd wanna keep as much line as you can on your gun. And most of the time these Wahoo are known for these blistering, screaming runs, but this one never did that. He just kept a slow kind of pace away from me the whole time, and I was able to keep a lot of that line on my reel, which is exactly what I wanted. So I just swam after him, keeping that pressure as light as I could. Again, I knew that shot was right there in the tail where I wanted it. I knew that was gonna be the best holding shot. You can see there's just fish all around me here still. So after a little while of kind of like, chasing after him and letting him kind of go where he wanted and just following him around. I kind of knew I was kind of on my own, you know? Asa kind of drops us on these spots and doesn't come back for a while. We've got our cooey, we've got our buoy, we've got, we're kind of self-sufficient, but I don't want to get too far away from that buoy and that spot we were on. So I kind of started swimming back the other way while still kind of fighting him and trying to like just drag him along, but let him do what he wants. You know, I didn't have another gun to get that second shot in. So I knew that no matter what here, like I would have to land this fish on my own. To do that, I wanted this thing done. You know, I wanted him super wore out, super tired. I'm not gonna try and grab this thing while he's green. While fighting these fish, it's so, so important to stay out of your line. You know, especially with these belt reels, a lot of times that gun doesn't drift back away from you. It stays with you. Now, I had the option of disconnecting it from me, obviously, and letting it float behind me, but I wasn't completely sure what this fish was gonna do, and I wanted to make sure 
that I still had that belt reel option if I needed it. You could see he just kind of keeps making those surgy runs where I really wasn't gaining on him. I just wanted to make sure I had that belt reel on as a backup. But when you're doing that, this line can get bunched up around you and you've gotta be really, really careful to not only the fish, the fish could run and obviously pull you, but what I kind of fear more is something eating that fish. You know, a big shark could come along. Uh, in Florida, you know, we have a big problem with the Goliath groupers. That's a huge danger to me is, you know, something else eating that fish while you're actively trying to get it away from that something and then you're tangled up and dragged down to wherever. So multiple times I almost had this guy kind of in my hands. But again, I really want to play this thing soft. I don't have a second gun to put another shot in, which is what I would normally just do. So I need this thing completely worn out and I'm not going to rush it. Did not want to lose this fish. The best way to kind of put fish on the boat is to land the one you have now. Eventually, I was able to get my hand on his tail, get his tail up out of the water, which kind of immobilizes him, and then get my hand in the gills. I spearfish a lot, but unfortunately, I don't get a lot of time with wahoo or tuna, so anytime I get the opportunity on one of these wahoo, it's just so special and I love it. I took my fish back to the float, put it on the cooey there, and was stoked to see Justin had one of his own. He was nowhere in sight, so I assumed he was off chasing after more of them, so I dropped mine and then went back out in the game. There were still plenty of fish around, but I didn't quite get a shot off. Mostly I was looking down at that reef, and all I wanted to do was get down there, check for uku, check for big moo and goats, and all the other big reef fish that I'm so used to hunting. So the whole entire time while hunting these wahoo, I'm looking down at this pinnacle, and I just cannot wait to get down there and do some reef diving. Now, again, I've got that 120 raw balance single roller, so I can do both. I've really got access to like hunting the small fish on the reef. You know, I can get down there and shoot a one pound goat, but I could also shoot a big wahoo if that thing comes in. So I was so excited. You can see the structure right here is beautiful. I think this was my first dive actually on the reef at all here. So really was just kind of doing a recon, just seeing what lived down there. Dropped down, clung to the side of a rock, looking around, just trying to kind of overwhelm, taking it all in. You can see how much life there is there. Absolutely jam-packed with life. I looked out here off the ledge, and this is typically where those uku will hang out. They'll hang out kind of off in the open water, in the sand, off the main structure. You can see he comes in, a couple grunts there, bring him right up to me, and a beautiful shot there. And I just put uh, Wahoo on the boat, and then now I've got this beautiful Uku. Shot all the way through this guy with that gun. Again, that 120 roller, a lot of power, can go straight through these fish, strung him. Nice little headshot there, right where you're looking to shoot these guys. No meat damaged, and just a beautiful fish. I just love hunting these Uku, no matter what. I mean, they're just, they're just one of my favorite fish to hunt on the reef. I just got an Uku. Pretty rad. How is that? I thought you were going to shoot it in the tail. How is that? I shot mine in the tail. Oh. I got the big one. What an unbelievable first drift there. They were like, jump in. The owners are going to be right there. They were sitting right there waiting. So I got an awesome shot on mine. Justin got one too. And I whiffed. So we're going to check one more. Nice high rock out here. See if it's got some more Onos on it. Onos, Ukus. I got that beautiful Uku. That was an awesome shot. What's he been doing? It's in the Bethes. Got a full box in the Betas there. Unbelievable start to the day. That was only the first spot, guys. So we moved pinnacles, and this one looks almost exactly the same as the last one. I get down, and a lot of times if I don't see anything around, kind of my first thing is those grunts. Those uku tend to come from like afar. A lot of times that grunting, it travels, I think, further than their vision, how far they could see you. And a couple of these grunts, a series of them, really trying to get that uku interested. You can see him out there. He's He's cruising in, cruising out. He doesn't really know whether he wants to commit or not. And that is the great time and place to be doing these grunts. When they're already clearly interested in me, you don't need to grunt. It's not gonna help you. They're already, they're already clearly on your way. But like this, those grunts are really there to coax them in. Unfortunately, here it didn't work. I always try to stop and get some shells for Sam. You know, it's kind of one of my weird things. I like, I don't know, I'm always picking up shells out here. I'm always looking in these little sand pits it's kind of nuts, but I was stoked to get over here to this untouched part of the island and look for shells. You can see the menpachi here are just stacked. They're giant. There's just lobster sitting in the middle of the day in cracks. Just a wild, wild spot. 
again, you can see this this rock is just nuts. I mean, we had like a, a pretty easy gentle current, just enough to kind of keep that upwelling going. You can see that current hits and all the bait up around this corner. That's kind of like your little vortex section of like life. You know, that's where the big predators will be cruising right up and down your your big ukus, your aluas, giant chivalis, your wahoo will be up higher. That's just kind of like where everything hangs out. Now, I'm looking for these joes here right now. There's so many over here and they get they get giant. Just really cool again with this gun. You know, I just shot a wahoo with this gun. And now I'm on the reef and I'm tracking these little bitty fish. I mean, that's, that's just kind of still mind blowing. You can see that joe right there. He doesn't really know what he's doing. He's cruising back and forth. It's really hard to track these bigger guns. So you just kind of put it there and wait till he comes in front. And just like that, he passes right in front of it. I didn't hit a rock or anything. I made sure I was aimed up above it. And a beautiful Joe for dinner. Another dive right here on that same area. Big, beautiful pinnacle. I'm crawling across the bottom, I guess, to get a little bit better of a spot, a little bit better place to put my hand while I can kind of rotate around and track this Uku. You can see him up there. He was really not the smartest fish and uh, played right into my hand, came right in close, and another beautiful shot on fish. Strung him, shaft all the way through him, and you see he took off. And these uku are just, just such a fun, phenomenal eating fish, such a great fish to hunt out here. We're always stoked to see them. I mean, many times I'll go out, and if I see an uku, if I shoot an uku, it's definitely a pretty amazing day. So to go out here and grab two of them like this, pretty much back to back, I mean, this, this part of the island is just so untouched. It's so hard to get to. So it's just so special whenever we get back here and get these beautiful fish, get access to these places that you just don't, don't have access to. So this was another spot out here that Justin took me to. Again, another one of these high rocks. You can see that wall there. I mean, I don't shoot anything on this dive. I just had to show you guys this, this kind of cliff that we were working with. I mean, beautiful. You can see all of those small fish, all the bait fish up kind of just feeding on all those nutrients, everything that's getting spit up from that upwelling. You know, it was, I don't know, I was probably at like 90, 100 feet here and it just dropped off into who knows what. It's Hawaiian power bar time. A deep free diving secret right there. This is when you know you're spoiled rotten. Sleeping. Look at that view. Been traveling all over the world and there's nothing that looks like that. Quick break for a spam musubi. Ace is gonna do some Kona crabs. We're gonna jump in, we're gonna hit the reef. We'll see you there. So from there we kind of left and went to a new area. You can see the difference in the visibility of the water here. There's a lot more of the runoff from the valleys. And you can see the difference in the bottom structure. We don't have like that same type of corals that we had in the clearer water. We've got more of those big boulders that hold a lot of those goat fish. And this is different species. You see a lot more knife jaws, a lot more just different fish over here in this type of habitat. You can see this goat right here comes right in. They're just giant and so dumb over here. It's a fish we were so used to targeting on the other side and they usually take so much more to get them. There were so many of these giant cole over here on this side of the island that we grabbed a bunch of them as well. We wanted to put it in this video, but we just had too much footage. So we made another video with the catch, clean, and cook, and you'll see that in a couple days. So these right here are knife jaw, knife jaw fish, knife fish, I don't know, somebody will correct me in the comments. But they're called that because they've got like these crazy beaks. You know, it's almost like a parrotfish beak. Maybe they, they eat the same stuff, kind of like a parrotfish, I don't know. But I've never actually shot one of these. You know, we never see these on the Kona side at all, like ever. I don't know whether it's the different structure over here or maybe the freshwater outflow or what it is, but they seem to be fairly common on this back side of the island. Now, you can see this monster came in right here. I, I probably should have shot one, I don't know. I didn't really know whether they were good eating or not, but later I heard that they really were, and maybe I'll get one next time. It seemed like every time I hit the bottom, these omilus or kahalas or something was kind of like right up in my face. There was always uhus around, these big parrotfish. Just really, really cool there, the amount of life. And I guess that's just a testament to how much pressure the other side gets. But um, like these goats right here, you see these goats just really dumb. Just the biggest goats ever, like the biggest joes you ever see, and they're everywhere. And uh, really cool, there's another beautiful headshot on uh, on a Joe Lewis. We love to eat these fish, they're phenomenal steamed. So when we were diving that last reef dive, 
Asa dropped these crab traps and we're looking for the Kona crabs here, which are, we call them Kona crabs, but also Spanner crabs, I think is their proper name. Check this out. We're gonna jump back in now. One more shot. We got a couple spots to hit. Looking for those Wahoo again. We saw them this morning. We know they were here. We're gonna see if we can get a couple more. So this technique never works for me, but somehow the dirty water late in the day, I came across this giant moo just sitting there in the current and was able to sneak up on him and dive bomb and get a beautiful shot on. Now you can see that Alua cave right there and all the Aluas kind of come out. I don't know if they wanted to eat it or what they wanted to do, but it was really cool. Again, all that life there. So at this spot earlier in the day, I shot a massive Alua. And guys, you're gonna have to wait for the next video for that one. We've done a catch, clean, and cook on a 70 pound giant trevally. It's gonna be freaking cool. But anyways, the same spot later in the day, produced this moo. Probably incredible spot for me. That was, that was just really freaking cool. This is one of my biggest moo, if not my biggest moo. And that dive bomb technique never works, but it did this time. You can see the change in like kind of the water quality. I mean, these are those same spots we were on earlier in the day. Now, whether the tide shifted or just the light got really low, just the water quality completely changed. It was a lot dirtier out there, which can be good for hunting sometimes. I mean, sometimes that gives you that extra little kind of invisibility cloak. You'll you kind of hide better and the fish seem to, seem to come a lot closer to you. You see those Kahalas there. Again, they seem to be around on every spot. Something that you don't, usually see over on the Kona coast. I mean, you do sometimes, but not as much. You can see how many goats there are. I mean, these big Joe Lewis goats are usually fairly tough to find on Kona side, and they're just cruising right in. Nice headshot, another beautiful goat for the steamer. So that one uku that we saw earlier that I was grunting towards but wouldn't come in, I think this might actually be the exact same spot and that same fish. Like I said, we came back and we worked our way back and hit a couple of those rocks again. So. I had a better hiding spot this time. You can see I'm kind of down in that little depression, that little gravel depression, and grunting, scratching, and that thing is coming right up over. Now, I tried earlier, I think it was this same fish, and he did not want to play. So, you can see him right here. I'm kind of tracking him really nice and slow, scratching, grunting, waiting. You know, that, that long pause, and just wait until he gets curious. I'll launch off the rock here. So yeah, that, that launch just to get an extra couple feet, get closer to him. And I think that shot was pretty poor, pretty low, but seemed to be holding at the time. I don't know why I dropped my gun there. I guess I was gonna put it on the belt reel, but I changed my mind. If I don't know how good a shot is, I'll always play them super light. But this one, I really, I knew it was low. I could see it just barely in the gut to this fish. And he was fighting really hard, like the whole time. And then for whatever reason, when these triggers came in, they started eating his guts, I guess. Because of that, he really slowed down. And, um, and that, was, that was very lucky because what happens next, if he would have kept fighting like he was before, I would have definitely lost him right here. Pulling him up, and then right here, the nightmare shaft falls out. Now, you got a couple options. You can grab the shaft, try and stick him. You can try and grab the fish. I chose the shaft to the face option. I got really lucky, got a solid hit. Another beautiful uku, my third for the day, which is kind of unprecedented. I mean, I've definitely never done that before. So beyond stoked on this fish. So a little bit later and another dive, and I saw this whole school of trevallias come in. And I wasn't exactly sure what they were, but I was pretty sure that they were yellow spot papillos, which I know are supposed to be really, really good eating. Now, they look just like every other trevally, kind of like, you know, your yellow jacks in Florida, but for whatever reason, these are supposed to be delicious. Trevallis love grunting. If you need them to stop, a lot of times a couple grunts will really get them to slow down. Now, I don't know what distracted them in there. Maybe it was an uh, octopus or a fish or something, but I'm really having a hard time picking out my fish and I want to not screw it up. Took my time, really waited, and got this stone shot on definitely my biggest yellow spot papillo. I don't, I don't even know if I've shot any before. If I have, they were really, really small. Um, I didn't even know they got this big. It was pretty cool. Justin was really, really excited. And when I see Justin excited about a fish, I know that, that that's gonna be a good eating fish. So he's like, that makes the best sashimi ever. We'll take this thing home, we'll cut it up raw, and we'll eat it just like you would a tuna or a wahoo. Sunrise to sunset, what an unbelievable day. 
I think we're gonna take all these fish, we're gonna flay them up. Asa, thank you. Unbelievable day. This is that beautiful yellow spot, um, yellow spot trevally. Yellow spot papillo. Yellow spot papillo. I get really excited for anything that I can eat sashimi, you know? Like, I'm kind of sick of all of your generic reef fish. You know, like I've had more freaking grouper and snapper and that type of thing than I could ever want in my lifetime. But I don't get very often the wahoos and the tunas that you can eat sashimi. Good stuff. Good stuff. Wow. That is incredible. For a jack. For a trevally, for a jack. Yeah, I was not expecting that. Much better than Ono. <laughs> that yellow spot papillo. That that is I, I would not expect that. Absolutely better tasting than a wahoo. The flavor is good. It's soft. It's soft, firm but like same time. just firm enough to like still have that texture and be delicious. Guys, that was an unbelievable episode. If you stuck around this long, thank you so so much. Go ahead and leave a comment. If you're not subscribed, do that now. There's no reason not to. I promise you, the one coming after this one or the next one is gonna be unbelievable. We've got a giant Trevally. They call him a Lewis here, catch and cook. We've got a Cole catch and cook, all from the same day. Unbelievable. Guys, stay tuned, we've got a lot more coming from you. Justin, thank you so much.